Right. Okay, so what I'm going to talk about today is Joomla custom fields, in, which are introduced in 3.7, and how we can use them to their full potential. Um, we'll uh, maybe have a few questions as we go along, but try and keep the main questions to the end. So, Joomla as it was um, is amazing, but uh, it has limited flexibility. You know, let's say you're building an estate agent or a realtor website. Um, it doesn't do what you need necessarily. You want to be able to add energy efficiency reports, survey reports, floor plans, availability of broadband information, addresses, school catchment information, lots of photos and things. It's just Joomla out of the box doesn't do that. Cookery websites with recipes, you might want to show lists of ingredients, preparation instructions, nutritional information, allergen lists. You could put it all into the content, into the descriptions, but it's very, very difficult to manage. Uh, if you're running a club or a society website, you might need information about uh, membership numbers, qualifications, what teams they're members of, competitions, match score results, and uh, so forth. So what are your current solutions, or well, before Joomla 3.7, what were the current options available for achieving that? Some of that you could do using the Joomla user profile plugin, or other plugins that do the same sort of thing. So you could add extra fields um, into the user uh, list, such as membership numbers and relationships with other family members and so forth. You could use um, CCKs or directory add-ons, there's a long list of them available for Joomla. Um, you could write a specialized special purpose component. You could try and find something on the JED that meets your requirements. Um, if it's not there, you probably need to develop something yourself. Um, probably the very least you'd need template overrides. Um, it becomes a complicated uh, problem. But there are downsides, as I said. They're complex to implement. Um, you know, the user profile plugin was handy, but you have to, to be able to extend it beyond what's in there already, you have to edit XML files, it becomes difficult to maintain. Uh, template overrides, you need to develop, have coding skills and enough time to be able to, to write them and to maintain them. You might need to buy custom extensions, you might need to write custom extensions, um, and then find the combination of all the bits and pieces that you need to be able to put your complex estate agency website together um, and hopefully that they, they have the functionality that you need. Um, I'm not going to name any, but I find that sometimes the CCKs and the directory add-ons are not intuitive to use. I've created websites with one or two of them. You come back six months later and you think, how the hell does this thing work? You know, you can't remember how to change the layouts, you can't remember how to add new fields and so forth. Um, they can become complex to manage. Uh, maintaining template overrides. I know template overrides are supposed to protect you from Joomla updates, but sometimes you need to update your template override because something has changed in Joomla. Uh, bespoke extensions are difficult and expensive to keep up to date. Um, your site requirements might change. You know, you suddenly have new categories. You have new criteria of uh, information you want to display. And as I said, you know, I find it difficult sometimes with these add-ons to remember how they work. Um, you know, paying developers for custom extensions, custom templates, template overrides is an expensive business. Um, and then, you know, you've, you've got your site up and running and your customer comes along and says, I want to make a change or Joomla changes. You've got to go back to the template developer or the custom application developer to make changes to keep it up to date. It becomes expensive. Uh, some of the CCKs end up being quite expensive by the time you've had all the add-ons you need. Um, and it all takes money and time. And I've heard often that users yearn for the simplicity of Joomla content items. You know, Joomla out of the box is clean, straight, forward. If only we could just use Joomla content items. So Joomla 3.7 does quite a lot to try and address some of those problems. Um, custom fields have now been added into the core for con core content types. We can add out of the box custom fields to content, contacts, and users, and it's not difficult for third-party add-ons to add custom fields to theirs as well. So it becomes a framework for a common framework for adding custom fields. So hopefully, no longer do we need the complex CCKs or the user profile plugins. So how do they work? Um, we can add them to, as I said, to content, contacts, and user profiles. Fields can be grouped, and they can be allocated to specific categories. Oops, wrong way around. 
So what I'm going to do is uh, I've created a demonstration foodie website, um, which I'm going to show you now to show you how some of these custom fields work. So I'll switch over to the browser, and hopefully in this screen size, it'll actually be readable. Yeah, it's a bit on the small side. Isn't it? Actually, you've got more on the screen there than I have. Right. Um, so this is in the content menu item, we have fields. Should I just make this full screen? We have fields. If we go into fields, it gives you a list of the custom fields that we've created. And I've pre-populated this already. Um, I've got ingredients lists. Where's it going? Yeah. Uh, we have ingredients lists, allergens, preparation time, uh, images of a finished dish, a difficulty rating, uh, cooking instructions. I've also got um, links to chefs, pages about chefs. I've got information about the location of restaurants. Uh, for chefs, information about where the um, chef's current restaurant is and any awards that the chef has currently um, uh, achieved. And those have been organized. I've got some groups here. I've got recipe fields, chef fields, and restaurant fields. So if I go back to my list of fields, I can use the search tools, change the field group, and show just the recipe fields. And these are just the fields associated with recipes. I can go in and change it to restaurants and show the field, in this case, just the one field associated with restaurants. Um, there's another way of categorizing, classifying them, which is using categories. Um, so if I look now at uh, recipes, I've changed the category drop down to search just for recipes. And you see here again, the fields are associated with recipes are there. So what I've done is I've classified these fields in two ways. They're associated with a category of recipes and to a field group of recipes. So you may ask yourself, what, what does the field group What's the purpose of the field group? It took me a while to figure it out. Um, but basically, if I go into my list of articles and create a new article, and if I go down to change the category to recipes, I now have a new tab here, recipe fields. So that tab there is from the field group. So you can actually create more than one field group. So you can have, I don't know, uh, cooking instructions as a group, and you can have ingredients and other information as another group. And they would appear then as two separate um, tabs. But the fields that they show would be controlled by the category that the article is in. Does that make sense? So let's go back to the list of fields, and we'll see what, the, what choices you have when you create a field. Um, you give it a title. Um, my field, oops. and um, there's a long list of field types, calendars, checkbox, color pickers, integers, lists, and so forth. Um, a couple of these are not standard, I've added them as custom field types that I've actually written myself. So that's another benefit, you can actually create new custom field types, um, or have somebody do them for you. Um, if we go for list, for example, Again, the page has to refresh. The reason it refreshes is because um, the choice down here of the list values uh, is an option that's only available for lists. Well, it's actually available for lists and radio boxes and check boxes, but it's not appropriate for text areas. So the choices you have when you create your field type um, is associated with the type of field that you've created. So we would just add a text and we'd add an option value and when you make it, when you add, when you added it to your, um, uh, when you saved it and added it to the field group, and you edit the um, article, you'd see it there. I won't save that now. I'll show you one of the ones I've already created. Um, let's find a list of allergens here. So it's my list of allergens, um, and I've got here milk, nuts, mustard, crustaceans, sulfites, etc. So forgive me if you have an allergy that I haven't listed, but um, I try to be reasonably comprehensive. So if we now go into an article, and let's search for um, a, a meat and poultry recipe. We can go and edit the pizza recipe. 
and you see the recipe fields are there and we have a list a text area field for our ingredients allergens I set it up as a multi select list so I can add in um, other allergens so I can say now that mustard is in my um, pizza recipe in my case I've also created a text area text field for the preparation time a, an image um, and difficulty rating a bit of an HTML editor so basically you can easily add all these fields um, to your articles and all of a sudden you've got a structured recipe um, with the information you need about a recipe um, in my case I've added in here a um, and a new a new field type which I've created which is a related article so you can go in and create a, a linkage to in this case the chef so we know which chef created this recipe um, so that's basically how you go about creating fields field groups and categories so it's a very quick introduction but does that make some sense the best way to understand it is really to just to play with it um, I'm going to show you a few more subtle things that are hidden from your first view in just a minute, but that was just to give you a quick introduction. So any questions about that before I move on? No. Okay. So let's go back to the presentation. So we've talked about creating different fields for different content types, which we've all done by category and by group. So that was the first step. Um, we now want to customize the output because it's all well and good creating this structured recipe. We actually want to show a structured recipe on our website. Um, how can we go about that? Um, well, the first way to do it is to position the output by the field. Now that sounds very promising. Um, we go into, let's go back to our fields and let's say our um, ingredients list here. Um, there are, there's a tab here called options. If we go to the bottom of that tab, automatic display, and basically it defines how the custom fields should be integrated into the content. And that sounds promising, apart from the fact that the three choices you have are after the title, before the display, and after the display. In other words, you can have it appear on the page after the title of the article, just in front of the main article text and after the display or have it not appear at all. So there's limited um, control there. You can choose where the label appears. So if we now show you what that would look like, um, let's go to a recipe page here. So this is chicken katsu. Uh, I don't have the real recipe. I've just put it in Latin so you can ignore that. This is what it looks like out of the box. I've got the title. The preparation time I've had in after I've set it up to appear after the title, so that's where it appears. Um, oops, sorry, got fat fingers here. Um, then I've got the description, and then I've got my after the display. I've set up the ingredients to appear, the allergens, my finished dish image, difficulty rating, oops, and the cooking instructions. Not very pretty, is it? Doesn't really. You know, if you're creating a recipe website, that's not what you'd want. You'd want quite a bit more than that. So, what are the alternatives? What can we do to take it forward from there? Um, there's actually more bad news, unfortunately. Um, we can't control whether we display the custom fields in lists separately from articles. So, you, if it displays, it'll appear in your category blog and it'll appear in your article. You can't say, I just want it to appear in your category blog or in your article. Um, well, I've actually got a, a pull request in GitHub to make that distinction so there would be an option to choose where it would appear. At the moment, there's nothing out of the box to make it appear in your modules. So if you have a list, a category articles module, um, you can't display the custom fields there either out of the box. So that's somewhat restricting. So what are the other options? Well, thankfully, there's a content plugin available for custom fields. So if I show you how that works, um, I have in my article, um, this is in my home article, no, is it my home article? Where did I put it? No, it's in my restaurant, my, it's my chicken katsu recipe, sorry. What I've done is I've broken my demo and I'm putting it back together again so that you can uh, 
see how it works. I've got to remember all the things I've done and do it in the reverse order. So back into my chicken katsu recipe. Uh, you see here, um, I've got um, a couple of content plugin um, outputs. Field one, I've got field one comma special, which we'll come to in just a second, and field one. I close that, go back into my plugins, and re-enable the content plugin. The content plugin is enabled by default. I just switched it off so you could see um, out of the box um, how it works. So our chicken katsu recipe, before when we were looking at it at the front end, it was showing the plugin output. If I now reload this page, you can see that it's showing me the ingredients list because field one was the ingredients list. Um, because unfortunately, again, you can't name the use the field by name, you have to use the field by ID, which is not brilliant. Um, the other problem, of course, is that the person creating your content, you, you can imagine creating a fancy little description um, layout, but you have to tell your um, authors, you have to put this bit of funny code in here, you've got to put this funny code there all the time to get the articles to look the right way. It's not necessarily um, particularly usable. Um, so that's one um, constraint that you have. So what can you do beyond that? Yes. If you want to use the plugin, then you have to put none on the uh, before after. The exactly, because it would appear twice. Exactly. So you'd have to do none. Yeah, exactly that. So did everybody understand that? Yeah. So you have to choose the display option to be none. Otherwise, it would appear twice on your on your article. Um, you can create layout overrides. Are people familiar with template overrides and layout overrides? Yes, who's, who's written the template override in their time? Yeah. Um, well, layout overrides work in a similar way to template overrides. Um, I'm going to go into my code base here. Um, so this is my, um, well, by the way, jab2017.net isn't a real domain. It's running on my laptop, so um, don't try and find it. Um, <laughs> you did already. I'll show you. I'll show you. A thing is, I've got a real online demo, which I'll show you um, at the end. But I didn't want to break the real one. Does that make sense? So um, let's go into. So this is my template. I'm using a, uh, a free um, Utheme template. In my HTML directory, in there, there's a folder called Layouts, and in there, I've got uh, com content and com fields. They're slightly different. Um, the conf, if I create a layout override in my com fields folder, it'll affect um, com fields everywhere. So it'll affect com fields in all the different components that use com fields. If I create a layout override within com content, then that layout override will only affect the layouts within com content. So it's, it's useful to know that. So if I go now to um, com fields and try and rename this folder. Rename that. So now that's going to be available. So notice here I've got two um, overrides. All I've done in this override is copy the original one and put a little message at the beginning. I'll show you what that means. Um, the render and the other one is special. Now do you remember when I showed you that article? There was I had field one comma, comma special as the input for the content. So you can actually tell um, the custom fields plugin to use a specific layout and in this case it's special and the special one would be used picked up from this layout folder so if we now go back here and I reload this page um, I've got one here all it's doing is writing out to say that it's picking up um, it's not even outputting the custom field all I'm doing is saying that it's picking up the layout override from special and then the second one is picking up the layout override from com fields the, the general one so it's just to show you it's not to to, to do anything clever with that layout, but um, it's to show you where you would put that file. Uh, the sort of information it's got in there, if I can get rid of that. Um, it goes through, it, if you were to look at that layout in detail, you'd see that it lists through the fields, picks up the fields. If the field value is blank, it doesn't display anything, um, and otherwise it just renders the output. So it's not doing anything particularly clever, but if you wanted to change it, and you wanted to, to play put wrappers around some of your fields or do some fields differently to others. Um, that's one way of doing it. Um, now that would if that render 
field as opposed to the special field that would affect the output of all your custom fields, not just the one from the content plugin. Does that make sense? So if you were wanting to just affect the one in your custom in your content plugin, you'd use a special layout and create a special layout override for it. Um, right. So who thought that was easy? <laughs> Not so many. Um, so we've talked about universal layout overrides and component-specific overrides and special layout overrides. Um, you can also use template overrides. And what I've done here is, um, let's go back into the back end. Uh, oh no, that back in the code here. So let's hide these and go back now to my article. Rename this folder. <coughs> okay, now this is again just a standard template override for com content articles. And what I've done in this one, so this is going to be an override for my all my pages to show different layouts. So you can see here now I've got a fairly simple layout here. This one is the default one. Um, and I've also got one called chefs, one called recipes, and one called restaurants. So we're now starting to say what we really want. We actually, layout overrides are just about changing individual fields. The, custom, the content plugin is not really ideal because you've got to get your end users to put them into your articles, which is not usable. So really what we need is probably a template override to have real control. Um, and we're using code. I know people are familiar with load templates, but what it means is that I can use this. Joomla will pick up the default template by default. And what I'm doing with it is saying, right, if the item is in category eight, then I'm going to use, that's the chef category. I'm going to use the template for chefs. If it's category 14, I'm going to use the, the category for restaurants. And if I'm in uh, category 10, I should have a long list of those because um, I haven't added them all in. Um, it would pick up the recipes one. Otherwise, it falls back to the core Joomla content template. So that's the sort of um, override template override you could create. And what does that do to our site? Yeah. Yes. Calling them is misspelled. Yeah, Oops. <laughs> well, it does. And I, if I was going to show the restaurant's page, it wouldn't work. But I was going to show you the, the recipes page in any case. Um, right. So we've got that done. So we now go into the front end of the site. And oh, yes, this I've not shown you this in. Um, yeah, chicken katsu. So now. Reload the page and um, see here at the top it says recipes layout. If I go back into the code here and load the recipes page, um, this is what I've done. All I've done with this template override is stuffed recipes layout at the top and then um, done a quick dump of the custom fields and then the rest of it's standard. But it's to give you what you need to be able to create that template override. So in other words, this is now the file that would give you the recipes. To access the custom fields, you access it via this item, JC fields. It's a list. Again, unfortunately, it's not indexed by field name. It's indexed by field ID. So if you wanted to show the allergens list, you'd probably have to look through it. You'd either have to remember that allergens is number three, or you'd have to search through it looking for the name of that field and outputting it, which is not, not ideal. So you can see now, if I go back to the article, I've listed the ingredients, the allergens, the preparation times. It's basically just a list of the fields with the recipes layout on the top. So all I'm doing there is showing you that the template override is being used and is doing what we need. So back to the presentation. Um, so is that something people would be happy to rattle off day after day, creating all your fancy layouts for your recipes and, yeah. Can you mention how to render it with the name? Or? Oh, with, with, or to find it by name? Yeah. Yes, so the, if you hang on for a second. Um, here, if I do now a good old var dump. No, I, I meant you can match the name to the field and then um, output the field. Yes. And then yes. Yes. What, what you could do, 
is as follows. You could have, um, oops, fields by uh, name. I have another, oops. Probably not a good idea to coding on the fly, is it? But, um, So what are we interested in? The allergens. Um, you can tell the quotation marks are not in the same places on my main desktop. So if I go back here, so it's now outputting the, the label. So all we've done here um, is we just created a new array, which we've indexed by name, and now we can access it. So it wouldn't be difficult. I probably should do a, a pull request in Joomla just to say, do a mapping of one to the other. It's, well, it's, it's, it's included in the context already. Say again? It's, uh, the context is uh, already included. Oh, in contacts, is it? Yeah. Right, okay, well, it's not in com content. Oh, yeah. <coughs> the names might not be unique, yeah. that's one problem. By category, you might have the same well, name in different unique. categories. Yes, it'd have to be, have a name. Yeah, yeah. But we could, you know, it'd be easy to try to help a function that would give you the field by name. You know, I, think, I was actually thinking what we should do is have a couple of helper functions to, to do some of these um, things just to make them a bit easier to use. Right. It's a small remark, but you have uh, also the whole value. Second? You, uh, you have also in this custom field the raw value that gives you. The raw value, yes, the unformatted value, yes, yes. Yeah. Sometimes important. Yes, so your list, your list fields, what it will output is the text value of the list field, but in the raw value you'd have the option value available as well, because um, you might need that for, uh, I don't know, for example, for putting class names around blocks of um, content on your page, for example. You don't want dollar currency signs and things in, which you might have in your formatted value. Um, so all of that is well and good, but you either need users who are happy using content plugins or you need to have coding um, capabilities. Um, what I'd like to show you now is another way of doing it, um, which is an add-on that will allow you to uh, manage the layouts for you. So you don't have to do the coding of your template overrides. You don't have to do the coding of the layout overrides. Um, something we've called easy layouts. Um, and what I'd like to do now is to um, tell you a little bit about what it is and what it does. Um, it's basically it's a graphical layout editor, a graphical layout manager. It allows you to create layouts for your content. At the moment, it's just com content, but it's, there's no reason why it won't extend to all the other um, add-ons. I mean, all the other components within Joomla very easily. It allows us to create layouts on the fly by view type, so your category blog separate from your individual articles, separate from your um, article uh, category articles, module, and so forth. Um, you can have different uh, layouts by category, so we can have different layouts for uh, recipes as opposed to restaurants or um, other, uh, uh, other um, content types. It's probably best demonstrated now by a demonstration of what it would look like and how it would work. So, if I now go back into my plugins, and enable that, First thing I'm going to do is show you my chicken katsu recipe. So now all of a sudden my chicken katsu page is looking more reasonable. Got a nice picture here, links to the chef creator, Luke Skywalker, ingredients, allergens, information about the article, the difficulty rating, preparation time, the description. I've still got my custom field, my content plugin bits in there, so you know ignore that. Final image, preparation instruction, and so forth. It's all laid out for you nicely there. 
And um, one little thing while I remember about it, this image here, I um, get the image information. Where has it gone? View image information. Uh, can you see here, this is now images, demo, recipes, meet 800 by 600, um, and then the photo. That is actually the uh, main image. You know, in content, you can add main images um, and, and um, introduction images, intro images to your articles. Um, I don't know about you, but I download a photo from my stock photo company or photo I've taken. It's a two and a half megabyte photo. Your users will do the same thing. You upload the photo and all of a sudden you have sites full of two and a half megabyte photos. So one of the things that we do is have an option to control the size of that image. So straight away, you're not going to be ever showing huge images. Uh, if I show you the meat and poultry page now, the list of articles, we've got a category image, separate, different um, information here. We're not showing all the fields, we're just showing a subset of the fields um, and so on. And down the side, it's using the category articles module, picking up the image. Um, again, this is something you'd have to use a template override for the module to get, because there's no way of getting custom fields at the moment into um, module output. Um, if we looked at the menu at the top, the restaurants page, um, the layouts in this case, oops, what did I do? Oh, I changed, yeah, I changed the, the um, Anyway, there was a map. Did you see it flash up very briefly? The map was there. Um, and it basically, different, different layouts um, on this page. Um, again, the map's missing there. And if you look at the chefs, um, different layout again. And all of this was done without any coding of template overrides at all. What we're using is a tool back here. Um, the component's currently called Simple CCK because we didn't have a a name for it, but it's not really a simple uh, CCK at all. All it is is a layout editor. It uses the core Joomla content, the core Joomla fields, and the custom fields. So it's not just the custom fields, it's picking in the core fields like the images, the full images, the introductory images, and so forth. Um, <coughs> let's go down, look at this. Go down to the uh, article blog, no, the single article one for the recipes, meat, meat and poultry, fish and seafood and desserts. So if I go into this one, um, so uh, with the screen size, it looks a bit strange because it's been uh, chopped off at the side. Um, but here, what I've done is I've specified which categories this layout applies to. Um, it's got options to hide and show advanced options, so you don't have to have all the um, complex options. I can choose um, an output framework, Bootstrap 2, Bootstrap 3, UI Kit 2 or 3, or no framework at all. And we don't load any JavaScript or CSS in the front end at all. All we're doing is using the appropriate um, HTML tags to, to output the pieces. Um, and it's all based on rows and columns. So we would create, um, this is a, the dark blue is a row, the light blue is a column. So we've put in the page heading, the article heading, uh, combined content icons and so forth in the top row. The second row has two columns and the first column has two sub columns. Um, we can add new rows. Um, and say how many columns you want in this. So let's say it's going to be a uh, three column one. You could put an HTML around the top and the bottom of that row. Save that. And at the bottom we'll have our new um, row. Um, we can add new fields into this. Uh, choose the field type and um, let's say we want one of our custom fields. Again, you can put an HTML wrapper around it. Um, Layout, whether, whether you want the layout to be a block or a field. So in other words, whether you want it to force a new line where it is or just to be in line. Most of the time you probably want it to be in line. Choose the custom field type. Um, let's say it's going to be the finished dish image. And because we chose an image, uh, we now have new custom field options available. And um, say what the scaling is. This is not the scaling of what's going to be displayed on the site. This is how you're scaling that. Um, the, the actual size of the image, the size to be displayed to be controlled by the CSS, if that makes sense. Um, so you can just add that to the field. 
add to the column. If you don't want it where it is, you can drag and drop it and put it in another um, block. Um, you can even move columns, put columns, um, so you have two columns there. So basically what we're doing is we're, we're just handling that grid layout, generating the output in terms of HTML, and then picking up the fields, putting them where you ask them to be, um, and outputting them. There are, uh, um, what else do I need to show you? Oh yes, I was going to show you about the images. Um, if I look at the full image here, um, it picks up the scaled image size. So again, if you've got users who keep uploading huge images, you can basically tell them, tell the system to scale it down to a more sensible size, um, and then um, output it. Um, this would then this this piece here would control the CSS output for that image on the page. Um, and manage supports um, versioning. Yep. It's another interesting bug. I don't know if people have seen that before. That if you're not scrolled to the very top of the page, the versioning block turns out being grey, which is not uh, not good. Um, That's basically it. You can basically, as I said, you can create layouts for all your different types, as I've got here, including the, um, the category module. Um, so you're not just limited to controlling the output on your component. You can now control the output on your um, modules as well and say which categories are going to be available for. So if we go back to here. So, in summary, um, what you have is core Joomla content, core Joomla custom fields. I've added in, in this case, a few extra custom field types, linked items, um, and maps. Um, it gives you an ability to edit and manage your layouts uh, very easily. Oh yes, this is one thing I was going to show you. Um, it struck me if I was building a recipe site and somebody was coming to it and they were allergic to something, they'd want to find all the recipes that didn't include um, a particular um, ingredient. So we have that um, here. So if I go to my uh, recipes here, I can click on recipes excluding wheat. And these are all the recipes now that don't include wheat. So there's a mechanism to add a filter to your med uh, modules or your menu items to show just items um, that don't include a particular value or do have a particular value. Um, uh, new features we're working on, conditional field display, so that you only display some fields or some part of your output dependent on the value of some other fields. Um, we want to add in a filter module so that you can dynamically control what information is, pay is outputted, outputted, output on your page. Um, we want to create custom, customized edit pages. Um, I don't know, does anybody use J-Events? Something that I was involved with. Um, that's one of the things that we do in J-Events is you can create um, edit pages for your events. You can control how the edit page um, is set up. So you can imagine if, you're, if you have um, somebody on a recipe site, you just want them creating recipes. You don't want just them to have access just to the, the recipes category. There's a lot of things you want to hide. You don't want them to see all the bits of the edit page that you don't want. So that's something we'll be incorporating in basically as well, which is controlling the layout of the edit page as well. Um, and we're looking to add more custom field types and outputs. So, for example, uh, we have a link between recipes and the chef. Well, it'd be good on the chef's page to show a list of all their recipes. So there's a two-way thing. Um, so, and that's the layout of the, uh, I mean, the where the demonstration actually, the real one is, which is demo.easylayouts.net. Uh, at the moment, we haven't set it up with backend access because we just finished it um, beginning of the week. Um, you can see the out the front end pages for now. Um, so, any questions? You mentioned in the, the slide just before, uh, you could, um, you could uh, have customized edit pages like that. Is that front end edit or back end? Well, you could set it up for both. We haven't got that done yet, but we've, do, we've done it in JEvents so we know how it's done. Um, so, basically, it would be a drag and drop interface again to create the edit page. So, you say, you know, I want the 
the full image um, to appear on this tab, you drag it and put it in the right place. And basically, now your article editing pages would be controlled as well. Is that plugin is that available now? Uh, it's, well, it's finished, it's usable, um, but it's not, we haven't um, made it available yet. It's something we'll be doing in the next week or two. So that's what I'm to find. Yes. Well, the, no, the demo is available. Yeah, um, yeah. That demo is there. Um, if you go to easylayouts.net, it's just a holding page at the moment. So, yeah. Where are the layouts in the system? Uh, the layouts are stored in the database, so they're generated on the fly. Um, so we, did, we chose not to, because one option we could have chosen would be to write a template override. Um, so basically to generate PHP code, which you could then use. It's actually easier um, just to have a component that generates the uh, layouts on the fly, because what you need to do is you know, to, 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 to create code that replicates what that does is um, an unnecessary complication in our mind. So I cannot switch back to putting it in my template? To what, sorry? Yes, you could. You just, un you just switch off the plugin. Or you, so let's say, for example, you... you Yes, yes, no, this is using your templates. All we've done is, if we go back to the demo here, this page here, this is using the standard Uthe Master template. We've not inserted any JavaScript, any CSS at all. Um, all we've done, this, because it's a UI kit template, all we've done is said this block is a, a, a UK width, this one's a UK column, whatever the, the HTML tags that's needed. So all it's doing is exactly what you would do if you were doing a template override or if you're writing complex articles. Mm, I, I meant extracting the layout back to my template, so I have the possibility to um, fine code, tweak it. You mean? To code more. Yes, at the moment that's not that's not available. Um, it's something we thought about. Um, yeah, it's not it's not something that's available at the moment. And what more you wanted, you could potentially add that in to the product. Well, because the product's name is going forward to being handed every minute. Um, so if there's a feature that you're saying, well, I need this, but it's not doing that. Okay, well, we can add it into the component. Yeah, generate, generating the PHP is, could be done, but it's probably fraught then, with difficulty. Then you're also writing the, like, you, you theme will come with a standard override or a lot of template product, override a lot. Yes, actually, that's true. A lot of your template so overrides. So we start generating one, potentially override on that. So it's, it's just an unnecessary layer. When you do it on the fly, you have very little overhead, and you get what you want, and you have a very interesting you break it. Um, it's not like doing a ball to die all the time, now you've got all your custom fields in a nice overall layer, which you can just drag. Oh, you know, potentially, you know, if, you're, if you're building a very sophisticated site for something, and you want to knock up a quick prototype of what it would look like, you know, you, it, this might not be how it would look for them eventually, but you could use this to quickly lay things around and say, what do you think of that? You could even do it when they're sitting there in front of them and say, what, should we move this block here? Should we move that block there? Then rough, when they're happy with it, you could then go off and um, recreate something more fine-tuned in a template override when you actually have time, but get the initial um, quick impact with the client um, just with the prototype. Anything else? Yeah. One general question about pattern fields. Yes.